There has been an increasing trend of cinematography I see in films these days, where cameras would pass through solid objects, one long seemingly continuous stitch in invisible areas. The seemingly one continuous take had dominated the film industry. The increasing trend is perhaps thanks to the development of technology and social media. Technology itself has allowed cameras to be smaller and packed, breaking the boundaries that past cinema can't do with this heavyweight camera. Editing programs and CGI also had become a big help to stitch the shot and create the illusion. But arguably, the biggest influence came from social media. As I usually scroll my phone in Instagram trying to find inspiration on filmmaking, what I usually find is the BTS shot of the long take final product, dissecting the process on how they do it. I would not deny that it looks cool, but it raised the question in my head, does it actually serve a purpose in the story? Usually, these shots are incorporated within commercial content such as music video or commercials. Short videos were demanded the audience attention in a very short time. Since most likely there aren't almost any stories to follow, it has become an alternative solution. But recently, I found this trend keeps on increasing in feature films, films that played in theaters on streaming surface. And I have to say that most have done it in the wrong way. I think the genre that always falls into these unconventional practices action sequences. The 2020 film Extraction featured 12 minute long thick action sequence. Atomic Blonde had a 10 minute staircase fight that follows again into the protagonist escorting her objective into a moving car. Even the final James Bond film had a long thick action sequence as he is fighting off the mercenaries. And again, can it be shot alternatively? The reason is because as I watched this film, it actually did take me out of the immersion. There's a feeling it is used as a media to show off the filmmaker's skill or just as a selling point to attract the audience of something that feels revolutionary. But the problem is that when you watch the whole film, it actually makes you put off. While I do generally enjoy movies like Birdman and 1917, which feature the whole runtime with one long take, I can't help but to feel the midpoint of the film that you don't come for the story anymore. I remember watching 1970 with my friend in the theaters, and in the midpoint we suddenly had a conversation about the cutting point, proving that this kind of concept could take us out of the movie. So is the long continuous take actually bad as it could take us out of the immersion? The film theory introduced realism and formalism, where realism lies in emphasizing the value of film as a documentary medium. Formalism leans to a more stylistic approach to tell a story, Film theorist Andre Bazin argues that to capture realism in cinema, a wide shot and long take are needed to ensure what is in frame is as realistic as possible. But apparently, what we see this day right now tends to lean into formalism as a cinematography style. Now, usually the intention to use the long take is wrong, either using long takes as a formalism approach in realistic film or vice versa. Nobody complained about the Kingsman 5 minute one take action sequences because it had been established that this film is a stylistic flair of the spy genre. But I feel put off in the atomic blonde long take fight because it is certainly trying to show a realistic fight sequence. But the past hour, it was established to be more formalistic with its transition and lighting. Same goes to extraction long take where the camera suddenly become virtual camera that move past toward the car rear window. But the whole film shows that it is a much more gritty, realistic tone which eventually breaks the immersion, feeling like a show of session. But of course, there are lots of great uses of long continuous take that we could actually find. The recent Park Chan book film Decision to Leave shows a lot of continuous long takes. Stitch with visual effects or transitioning from an animation to live action shot. Or in a more realistic approach, Hirokazu Koreeda's shoplifters feature a lot of long take, but rarely does the camera move as we the audience observe the humanistic and realistic relationship on that screen. Yet even though the misuse of the above examples are apparent, there is still a degree of respect for them being able to pull off the complex shot. While I do hear complaints, I also found praise in how the filmmakers are able to choreograph the complex sequences into entertaining ones or even influencing small filmmakers to try out the technique in their short films and execute in a more correct way. After all, film is an art form of blank canvas where filmmakers could try any technique that they put into the film if they think this is the right one. If the technique was found to have reached the predicted result, then it will serve as a clue to the film industry on how to improve the technique so it could reach the intention. A very great reminder for filmmakers to keep on trying new things because that's where the fun lies in filmmaking.